Renewable energy is generally defined as energy that comes from resources which are naturally replenished on a human time scale such as sunlight, wind, rain, tides, waves and geothermal heat. Renewable energy replaces conventional fuels in four distinct areas, electricity generation, hot water space heating, motor fuels, and rural energy services. About 16% of global final energy consumption presently comes from renewable resources, with 10% of all energy from traditional biomass, mainly used for heating, and 3.4% from hydroelectricity. New renewables account for another 3% and are growing rapidly. At the national level, at least 30 nations around the world already have renewable energy contributing more than 20% of energy supply. National renewable energy markets are projected to continue to grow strongly in the coming decade and beyond. Wind power, for example, is growing at the rate of 30% annually, with a worldwide installed capacity of 282,482 megawatts at the end of 2012. Renewable energy resources exist over wide geographical areas, in contrast to other energy sources, which are concentrated in a limited number of countries. Rapid deployment of renewable energy and energy efficiency is resulting in significant energy security, climate change mitigation, and economic benefits. In international public opinion surveys there is strong support for promoting renewable sources such as solar power and wind power. While many renewable energy projects are large-scale, renewable technologies are also suited to rural and remote areas and developing countries, where energy is often crucial in human development. United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has said that renewable energy has the ability to lift the poorest nations to new levels of prosperity. Overview Renewable energy flows involve natural phenomena such as sunlight, wind, tides, plant growth, and geothermal heat, as the International Energy Agency explains. Renewable energy is derived from natural processes that are replenished constantly. In its various forms, it derives directly from the sun, or from heat generated deep within the earth. Included in the definition is electricity and heat generated from solar, wind, ocean, hydropower, biomass, geothermal resources, and biofuels and hydrogen derived from renewable resources. Wind power is growing at the rate of 30% annually, with a worldwide installed capacity of 282,482 megawatts at the end of 2012 and is widely used in Europe, Asia, and the United States. At the end of 2012 the photovoltaic capacity worldwide was 100,000 MW, and PV power stations are popular in Germany and Italy. Solar thermal power stations operate in the USA and Spain, and the largest of these is the 354 MW SEGS power plant in the Majave Desert. The world's largest geothermal power installation is the Geysers in California, with a rated capacity of 750 MW. Brazil has one of the largest renewable energy programs in the world, involving production of ethanol fuel from sugar cane, and ethanol now provides 18% of the country's automotive fuel. Ethanol fuel is also widely available in the USA. As of 2011, small solar PV systems provide electricity to a few million households, and micro-hydro configured into mini-grid serves many more. Over 44 million households use biogas made in household scale digesters for lighting and or cooking, and more than 166 million households rely on a new generation of more efficient biomass cook stoves. United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has said that renewable energy has the ability to lift the poorest nations to new levels of prosperity. Renewable energy resources and significant opportunities for energy efficiency exist over wide geographical areas, in contrast to other energy sources, which are concentrated in a limited number of countries. Rapid deployment of renewable energy and energy efficiency, and technological diversification of energy sources, would result in significant energy security and economic benefits. Renewable energy replaces conventional fuels in four distinct areas, electricity generation, hot water space heating, motor fuels, and rural energy services, power generation. Renewable energy provides 21.7% of electricity generation worldwide as of 2013. 
Renewable power generators are spread across many countries, and wind power alone already provides a significant share of electricity in some areas, for example, 14% in the U.S. state of Iowa, 40% in the northern German state of Schleswig-Holstein, and 49% in Denmark. Some countries get most of their power from renewables, including Iceland, Norway, Brazil, Austria, New Zealand, and Sweden. Heating Solar hot water makes an important contribution to renewable heat in many countries, most notably in China, which now has 70% of the global total. Most of these systems are installed on multi-family apartment buildings and meet a portion of the hot water needs of an estimated 50 euro 60 million households in China. Worldwide, total installed solar water heating systems meet a portion of the water heating needs of over 70 million households. The use of biomass for heating continues to grow as well. In Sweden, national use of biomass energy has surpassed that of oil. Direct geothermal for heating is also growing rapidly. Transport fuels Renewable biofuels have contributed to a significant decline in oil consumption in the United States since 2006. The 93 billion liters of biofuels produced worldwide in 2009 displaced the equivalent of an estimated 68 billion liters of gasoline, equal to about 5% of world gasoline production. At the national level, at least 30 nations around the world already have renewable energy contributing more than 20% of energy supply. National renewable energy markets are projected to continue to grow strongly in the coming decade and beyond, and some 120 countries have various policy targets for longer-term shares of renewable energy, including a 20% target of all electricity generated for the European Union by 2020. Some countries have much higher long-term policy targets of up to 100% renewables. Outside Europe, a diverse group of 20 or more other countries target renewable energy shares in the 2020 Euro 2030 time frame that range from 10% to 50%. In international public opinion surveys there is strong support for promoting renewable sources such as solar power and wind power, requiring utilities to use more renewable energy and providing tax incentives to encourage the development and use of such technologies. There is substantial optimism that renewable energy investments will pay off economically in the long term. Climate change and global warming concerns, coupled with high oil prices, peak oil, and increasing government support, are driving increasing renewable energy legislation, incentives and commercialization. New government spending Regulation and policies help the industry weather the global financial crisis better than many other sectors. According to a 2011 projection by the International Energy Agency, solar power generators may produce most of the world's electricity within 50 years, dramatically reducing the emissions of greenhouse gases that harm the environment. Renewable energy sources, that derive their energy from the sun either directly or indirectly, such as hydro and wind are expected to be capable of supplying humanity energy for almost another 1 billion years, at which point the predicted increase in heat from the sun is expected to make the surface of the earth too hot for liquid water to exist. History Prior to the development of coal in the mid-19th century, nearly all energy use was renewable. Almost without a doubt the oldest known use of renewable energy, in the form of traditional biomass to fuel fires, dates from 790,000 years ago. Use of biomass for fire did not become commonplace until many hundreds of thousands of years later, sometime between 200,000 and 400,000 years ago. Probably the second oldest usage of renewable energy is harnessing the wind in order to drive ships over water. This practice can be traced back some 7,000 years, to ships on the Nile. Moving into the time of recorded history, the primary sources of traditional renewable energy were human labor, animal power, water power, wind, in grain crashing windmills, and firewood, a traditional biomass. A graph of energy use in the United States up until 1900 shows oil and natural gas with about the same importance in 1900 as wind and solar played in 2010. By 1873, concerns of running out of coal prompted experiments with using solar energy. Development of solar engines continued until the outbreak of World War I. 
The importance of solar energy was recognized in a 1911 Scientific American article, in the far distant future, natural fuels having been exhausted, solar power will remain as the only means of existence of the human race. The theory of peak oil was published in 1956. In the 1970s environmentalists promoted the development of renewable energy both as a replacement for the eventual depletion of oil, as well as for an escape from dependence on oil, and the first electricity generating wind turbines appeared. Solar had long been used for heating and cooling, but solar panels were too costly to build solar farms until 1980. Mainstream Renewable Technologies Wind Power Airflows can be used to run wind turbines. Modern utility scale wind turbines range from around 600 a kilowatt to 5 MW of rated power, although turbines with rated output of 1.5 a euro 3 MW have become the most common for commercial use. The power available from the wind is a function of the cube of the wind speed, so as wind speed increases, power output increases dramatically up to the maximum output for the particular turbine. Areas where winds are stronger and more constant, such as offshore and high altitude sites, are preferred locations for wind farms. Typical capacity factors are 20 to 40 percent, with values at the upper end of the range in particularly favorable sites. Globally, the long term technical potential of wind energy is believed to be five times total current global energy production, or 40 times current electricity demand, assuming all practical barriers needed were overcome. This would require wind turbines to be installed over large areas, particularly in areas of higher wind resources, such as offshore. As offshore wind speeds average 90% greater than that of land, so offshore resources can contribute substantially more energy than land station turbines. Hydropower Energy in water can be harnessed and used. Since water is about 800 times denser than air, even a slow-flowing stream of water or moderate sea swell, can yield considerable amounts of energy. There are many forms of water energy, hydroelectric energy is a term usually reserved for large-scale hydroelectric dams. The largest of which is the Three Gorges Dam in China and a smaller example is the Akosumbo Dam in Ghana. Microhydro systems are hydroelectric power installations that typically produce up to 100 a kilowatt of power. They are often used in water-rich areas as a remote area power supply. Run-of-the-river hydroelectricity systems derive kinetic energy from rivers and oceans without the creation of a large reservoir. Hydropower is produced in 150 countries, with the Asia-Pacific region generating 32% of global hydropower in 2010. China is the largest hydroelectricity producer, with 721 terawatt-hours of production in 2010 representing around 17% of domestic electricity use. There are now three hydroelectricity plants larger than 10 GW, the Three Gorges Dam in China, Atayapu Dam across the Brazil-Paraguay border, and Guri Dam in Venezuela. Solar energy Solar energy, radiant light and heat from the sun, is harnessed using a range of ever-evolving technologies such as solar heating, solar photovoltaics, solar thermal electricity solar architecture and artificial photosynthesis. Solar technologies are broadly characterized as either passive solar or active solar depending on the way they capture, convert and distribute solar energy. Active solar techniques include the use of photovoltaic panels and solar thermal collectors to harness the energy. Passive solar techniques include orienting a building to the sun, selecting materials with favorable thermal mass or light dispersing properties, and designing spaces that naturally circulate air. Solar power is the conversion of sunlight into electricity either directly using photovoltaics, or indirectly using concentrated solar power. Concentrated solar power systems use lenses or mirrors and tracking systems to focus a large area of sunlight into a small beam. Commercial concentrated solar power plants were first developed in the 1980s. Photovoltaics convert light into electric current using the photoelectric effect. Photovoltaics are an important and relatively inexpensive source of electrical energy where grid power is inconvenient, unreasonably expensive to connect, or simply unavailable. However, as the cost of solar electricity is falling, 
solar power is also increasingly being used even in grid-connected situations as a way to feed low-carbon energy into the grid. In 2011, the International Energy Agency said that the development of affordable, inexhaustible and clean solar energy technologies will have huge longer-term benefits. It will increase countries' energy security through reliance on an indigenous, inexhaustible and mostly import-independent resource, enhance sustainability, reduce pollution, lower the costs of mitigating climate change, and keep fossil fuel prices lower than otherwise. These advantages are global. Hence the additional costs of the incentives for early deployment should be considered learning investments. They must be wisely spent and need to be widely shared. Biomass Biomass is biological material derived from living, or recently living organisms. It most often refers to plants or plant-derived materials which are specifically called lignocellulosic biomass. As an energy source, Biomass can either be used directly via combustion to produce heat, or indirectly after converting it to various forms of biofuel. Conversion of biomass to biofuel can be achieved by different methods which are broadly classified into, thermal, chemical, and biochemical methods. Wood remains the largest biomass energy source today. Examples include forest residues, yard clippings, wood chips and even municipal solid waste. In the second sense, biomass includes plant or animal matter that can be converted into fibers or other industrial chemicals, including biofuels. Industrial biomass can be grown from numerous types of plants, including miscanthus, switchgrass, hemp, corn, poplar, willow, sorghum, sugarcane, bamboo, and a variety of tree species, ranging from eucalyptus to oil palm. Plant energy is produced by crops specifically grown for use as fuel that offer high biomass output per hectare with low input energy. Some examples of these plants are wheat, which typically yields 7.5 Euro 8 tons of grain per hectare, and straw, which typically yield 3.5 Euro 5 tons per hectare in the UK. The grain can be used for liquid transportation fuels while the straw can be burned to produce heat or electricity. Plant biomass can also be degraded from cellulose to glucose through a series of chemical treatments, and the resulting sugar can then be used as a first-generation biofuel. Biomass can be converted to other usable forms of energy like methane gas or transportation fuels like ethanol and biodiesel. Rotting garbage, and agricultural and human waste, all release methane gas in a euro also called landfill gas, or biogas. Crops such as corn and sugar cane, can be fermented to produce the transportation fuel, ethanol. Biodiesel, another transportation fuel, can be produced from leftover food products like vegetable oils and animal fats. Also, biomass to liquids and cellulosic ethanol are still under research. There is a great deal of research involving algal, or algae derived, Biomass due to the fact that it's a non-food resource and can be produced at rates 5 to 10 times those of other types of land-based agriculture, such as corn and soy. Once harvested, it can be fermented to produce biofuels such as ethanol, butanol, and methane, as well as biodiesel and hydrogen. The biomass used for electricity generation varies by region. Forest byproducts, such as wood residues, are common in the United States. Agricultural waste is common in Mauritius and Southeast Asia. Animal husbandry residues, such as poultry litter, are common in the UK. Biofuel Biofuels include a wide range of fuels which are derived from biomass. The term covers solid biofuels, liquid biofuels, and gaseous biofuels. Liquid biofuels include bioalcohols, such as bioethanol, and oils, such as biodiesel. Gaseous biofuels include biogas, landfill gas and synthetic gas. Bioethanol is an alcohol made by fermenting the sugar components of plant materials and it is made mostly from sugar and starch crops. These include maize, sugar cane and, more recently, sweet sorghum. The latter crop is particularly suitable for growing in dryland conditions, and is being investigated by ICRISAT for its potential to provide fuel along with food and animal feed, in arid parts of Asia and Africa. With advanced technology being developed, 
cellulosic biomass, such as trees and grasses, are also used as feedstocks for ethanol production. Ethanol can be used as a fuel for vehicles in its pure form, but it is usually used as a gasoline additive to increase octane and improve vehicle emissions. Bioethanol is widely used in the USA and in Brazil. The energy costs for producing bioethanol are almost equal to the energy yields from bioethanol. However, according to the European Environment Agency, biofuels do not address global warming concerns. Biodiesel is made from vegetable oils, animal fats or recycled greases. Biodiesel can be used as a fuel for vehicles in its pure form, but it is usually used as a diesel additive to reduce levels of particulates, carbon monoxide, and hydrocarbons from diesel-powered vehicles. Biodiesel is produced from oils or fats using transesterification and is the most common biofuel in Europe. Biofuels provided 2.7% of the world's transport fuel in 2010. Geothermal energy Geothermal energy is from thermal energy generated and stored in the earth. Thermal energy is the energy that determines the temperature of matter. Earth's geothermal energy originates from the original formation of the planet and from radioactive decay of minerals. The geothermal gradient, which is the difference in temperature between the core of the planet and its surface, drives a continuous conduction of thermal energy in the form of heat from the core to the surface. The adjective geothermal originates from the Greek roots geo, meaning earth, and thermos, meaning heat. The heat that is used for geothermal energy can be from deep within the Earth, all the way down to Earth's core, a euro 4,000 miles down. At the core, temperatures may reach over 9,000 AA degree Fahrenheit. Heat conducts from the core to surrounding rock. Extremely high temperature and pressure cause some rock to melt, which is commonly known as magma. Magma convects upward since it is lighter than the solid rock. This magma then heats rock and water in the crust, sometimes up to 700 AA degree Fahrenheit. From hot springs, geothermal energy has been used for bathing since Paleolithic times and for space heating since ancient Roman times, but it is now better known for electricity generation. Renewable energy commercialization Growth of renewables From the end of 2004, Worldwide renewable energy capacity grew at rates of 10 a euro 60% annually for many technologies. For wind power and many other renewable technologies, growth accelerated in 2009 relative to the previous four years. More wind power capacity was added during 2009 than any other renewable technology. However, grid-connected PV increased the fastest of all renewables technologies, with a 60% annual average growth rate. In 2010, renewable power constituted about a third of the newly built power generation capacities. Projections vary, but scientists have advanced a plan to power 100% of the world's energy with wind, hydroelectric, and solar power by the year 2030. According to a 2011 projection by the International Energy Agency, solar power generators may produce most of the world's electricity within 50 years dramatically reducing the emissions of greenhouse gases that harm the environment. Cedric Philibert, senior analyst in the Renewable Energy Division at the IEA said, photovoltaic and solar thermal plants may meet most of the world's demand for electricity by 2060 AA Euro, and half of all energy needs so a Euro with wind, hydropower and biomass plants supplying much of the remaining generation. Photovoltaic and concentrated solar power together can become the major source of electricity, Philibert said. Economic trends Renewable energy technologies are getting cheaper, through technological change and through the benefits of mass production and market competition. A 2011 IEA report said, a portfolio of renewable energy technologies is becoming cost competitive in an increasingly broad range of circumstances in some cases providing investment opportunities without the need for specific economic support, and added that cost reductions in critical technologies, such as wind and solar, are set to continue. Hydroelectricity and geothermal electricity produced at favorable sites are now the cheapest way to generate electricity. Renewable energy costs continue to drop, and the levelized cost of electricity is declining for wind power, solar photovoltaic, 
concentrated solar power and some biomass technologies. Renewable energy is also the most economic solution for new grid-connected capacity in areas with good resources. As the cost of renewable power falls, the scope of economically viable applications increases. Renewable technologies are now often the most economic solution for new generating capacity. Where oil fired generation is the predominant power generation source, a lower cost renewable solution almost always exists today. A series of studies by the U.S. National Renewable Energy Laboratory modeled the grid in the western U.S. under a number of different scenarios where intermittent renewables accounted for 33% of the total power. In the models, Inefficiencies in cycling the fossil fuel plants to compensate for the variation in solar and wind energy resulted in an additional cost of between $0.47 cents and $1.28 to each megawatt hour generated. However, the savings in the cost of the fuel saved adds up to $7 billion, meaning the added costs are, at most, 2% of the savings. Hydroelectricity The Three Gorges Dam in Hubei, China has the world's largest instantaneous generating capacity, with the Itaipu Dam in Brazil Paraguay in second place. The Three Gorges Dam is operated jointly with the much smaller Gizhba Dam. As of 2012, the total generating capacity of this two-dam complex is 25,615 MW. In 2008, this complex generated 98 TWh of electricity which is 3% more power in one year than the 95 TWh generated by Itaipu in 2008. Wind Power Development Wind power is growing at over 20% annually, with a worldwide installed capacity of 238,000 MW at the end of 2011, and is widely used in Europe, Asia, and the United States. Several countries have achieved relatively high levels of wind power penetration, such as 21% of stationary electricity production in Denmark, 18% in Portugal, 16% in Spain, 14% in Ireland and 9% in Germany in 2010. As of 2011, 83 countries around the world are using wind power on a commercial basis. As of 2012, the Alta Wind Energy Centre is the world's largest wind farm. The London Array is the largest offshore wind farm in the world. Phase 1 is complete, it is intended to introduce more turbines for Phase 2. The United Kingdom is the world's leading generator of offshore wind power, followed by Denmark. There are many large wind farms under construction and these include Onholt Offshore Wind Farm, Bard Offshore 1, Clyde Wind Farm, Far Sent NTA Sent Neil Cordulac Wind Farm, Greater Gabbard Wind Farm, Lynx Wind Farm, London Array, Lower Snake River Wind Project, MacArthur Wind Farm, Shepherd's Flat Wind Farm, and the Sheringham Shoal. Solar Thermal The United States conducted much early research in photovoltaics and concentrated solar power. The U.S. is among the top countries in the world in electricity generated by the sun and several of the world's largest utility-scale installations are located in the desert southwest. The oldest solar power plant in the world is the 354-megawatt SEGS thermal power plant, in California. The Avampa Solar Electric Generating System is a solar thermal power project in the California Majave Desert, 40 miles southwest of Las Vegas, with a gross capacity of 377 AMW. The 280 AMW Solana Generating Station is a solar power plant near Gila Bend, Arizona, about 70 miles southwest of Phoenix, completed in 2013. When commissioned it was the largest parabolic trough plant in the world and the first U.S. solar plant with molten salt thermal energy storage. The solar thermal power industry is growing rapidly with 1.3 GW under construction in 2012 and more planned. Spain is the epicenter of solar thermal power development with 873 MW under construction, and a further 271 MW under development. In the United States. 5,600 MW of solar thermal power projects have been announced. In developing countries, three World Bank projects for integrated solar thermal combined cycle gas turbine power plants in Egypt, Mexico, and Morocco have been approved. Photovoltaic Power Stations 
solar photovoltaic cells convert sunlight into electricity and photovoltaic production has been increasing by an average of more than 20% each year since 2002, making it a fast-growing energy technology. While wind is often cited as the fastest-growing energy source, photovoltaics since 2007 has been increasing at twice the rate of wind a euro an average of 63.6% slash year, due to the reduction in cost. At the end of 2011 the photovoltaic capacity worldwide was 67.4 GW, a 69.8% annual increase. Top capacity countries were, in GW, Germany 24.7, Italy 12.8, Japan 4.7, Spain 4.4, the USA 4.4, and China 3.1. Many solar photovoltaic power stations have been built, mainly in Europe. As of May 2012, the largest photovoltaic power plants in the world are the Aqua Caliente Solar Project, Sharanka Solar Park, Golmud Solar Park, Perovo Solar Park, Sarnia Photovoltaic Power Plant, Brandenburg Briest Solar Park, Solar Park Fino Tower, Montalto di Castro Photovoltaic Power Station, and the Eid Gebek Solar Park. There are also many large plants under construction. The Desert Sunlight Solar Farm is a 550 MW solar power plant under construction in Riverside County, California, that will use thin film solar photovoltaic modules made by First Solar. The Topaz Solar Farm is a 550 MW photovoltaic power plant, being built in San Luis Obispo County, California. The Blythe Solar Power Project is a 500 MW photovoltaic station under construction in Riverside County, California. The California Valley Solar Ranch is a 250 MW solar photovoltaic power plant, which is being built by Sun Power in the Carrizo Plain, northeast of California Valley. The 230 MW Antelope Valley Solar Ranch is a first solar photovoltaic project which is under construction in the Antelope Valley area of the western Majav Desert, and due to be completed in 2013. Many of these plants are integrated with agriculture and some use tracking systems that follow the sun's daily path across the sky to generate more electricity than fixed mounted systems. There are no fuel costs or emissions during operation of the power stations. However, when it comes to renewable energy systems and PV, it is not just large systems that matter. Building integrated photovoltaics or on-site PV systems use existing land and structures and generate power close to where it is consumed. Biofuel Development Biofuels provided 3% of the world's transport fuel in 2010. Mandates for blending biofuels exist in 31 countries at the national level and in 29 states' provinces. According to the International Energy Agency, biofuels have the potential to meet more than a quarter of world demand for transportation fuels by 2050. Since the 1970s, Brazil has had an ethanol fuel program which has allowed the country to become the world's second largest producer of ethanol and the world's largest exporter. Brazil's ethanol fuel program uses modern equipment and cheap sugar cane as feedstock, and the residual cane waste is used to produce heat and power. There are no longer light vehicles in Brazil running on pure gasoline. By the end of 2008 there were 35,000 filling stations throughout Brazil with at least one ethanol pump. Nearly all the gasoline sold in the United States today is mixed with 10% ethanol, a mix known as E10 and motor vehicle manufacturers already produce vehicles designed to run on much higher ethanol blends. Ford, Daimler AG, and GM are among the automobile companies that sell flexible fuel cars, trucks, and minivans that can use gasoline and ethanol blends ranging from pure gasoline up to 85% ethanol. By mid-2006, there were approximately 6 million E85 compatible vehicles on U.S. roads. The challenge is to expand the market for biofuels beyond the farm states where they have been most popular to date. Flex fuel vehicles are assisting in this transition because they allow drivers to choose different fuels based on price and availability. The Energy Policy Act of 2005, which calls for 7.5 billion U.S. gallons of biofuels to be used annually by 2012, will also help to expand the market. Geothermal Development Geothermal power is cost-effective, reliable, 
sustainable, and environmentally friendly, but has historically been limited to areas near tectonic plate boundaries. Recent technological advances have dramatically expanded the range and size of viable resources, especially for applications such as home heating, opening a potential for widespread exploitation. Geothermal wells release greenhouse gases trapped deep within the earth, but these emissions are much lower per energy unit than those of fossil fuels. As a result, geothermal power has the potential to help mitigate global warming if widely deployed in place of fossil fuels. The International Geothermal Association has reported that 10,715 MW of geothermal power in 24 countries is online, which is expected to generate 67,246 GWh of electricity in 2010. This represents a 20% increase in geothermal power online capacity since 2005. IGA projects this will grow to 18,500 MW by 2015, due to the large number of projects presently under consideration, often in areas previously assumed to have little exploitable resource. In 2010, the United States led the world in geothermal electricity production with 3,086 MW of installed capacity from 77 power plants. The largest group of geothermal power plants in the world is located at the Gizas, a geothermal field in California. The Philippines follows the U.S. as the second highest producer of geothermal power in the world, with 1,904 MW of capacity online. Geothermal power makes up approximately 18% of the country's electricity generation. Developing countries. Renewable energy can be particularly suitable for developing countries. In rural and remote areas, transmission and distribution of energy generated from fossil fuels can be difficult and expensive. Producing renewable energy locally can offer a viable alternative. Technology advances are opening up a huge new market for solar power, the approximately 1.3 billion people around the world who don't have access to grid electricity. Even though they are typically very poor, these people have to pay far more for lighting than people in rich countries because they use inefficient kerosene lamps. Solar power costs half as much as lighting with kerosene. An estimated 3 million households get power from small solar PV systems. Kenya is the world leader in the number of solar power systems installed per capita. More than 30,000 very small solar panels, each producing 12 to 30 watts, are sold in Kenya annually. Some small island developing states are also turning to solar power to reduce their costs and increase their sustainability. Microhydra configured into mini grids also provide power. Over 44 million households use biogas made in household scale digesters for lighting and or cooking, and more than 166 million households rely on a new generation of more efficient biomass cook stoves. Clean liquid fuel sourced from renewable feedstocks are used for cooking and lighting in energy poor areas of the developing world. Alcohol fuels can be produced sustainably from non food sugary, starchy, and cellulostic feedstocks. Project Gaia, Incorporated and Clean Star Mozambique are implementing clean cooking programs with liquid ethanol stoves in Ethiopia, Kenya, Nigeria and Mozambique. Renewable energy projects in many developing countries have demonstrated that renewable energy can directly contribute to poverty reduction by providing the energy needed for creating businesses and employment. Renewable energy technologies can also make indirect contributions to alleviating poverty by providing energy for cooking, space heating, and lighting. Renewable energy can also contribute to education, by providing electricity to schools. Industry and Policy Trends U.S. President Barack Obama's American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009 includes more than $70 billion in direct spending and tax credits for clean energy and associated transportation programs. Clean Edge suggests that the commercialization of clean energy will help countries around the world pull out of the current economic malaise. Leading renewable energy companies include First Solar, Gamesa, GE Energy, QCells, Sharp Solar, Siemens, Sunopta, Suntech Power, and Vestas. The military has also focused on the use of renewable fuels for military vehicles. Unlike fossil fuels, renewable fuels can be produced in any country, 
creating a strategic advantage. The U.S. military has already committed itself to have 50% of its energy consumption come from alternative sources. The International Renewable Energy Agency is an intergovernmental organization for promoting the adoption of renewable energy worldwide. It aims to provide concrete policy advice and facilitate capacity building and technology transfer. IRENA was formed on January 26, 2009, by 75 countries signing the Charter of IRENA. As of March 2010, IRENA has 143 member states who all are considered as founding members, of which 14 have also ratified the statute. As of 2011, 119 countries have some form of national renewable energy policy target or renewable support policy. National targets now exist in at least 98 countries. There is also a wide range of policies at state provincial and local levels. United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has said that renewable energy has the ability to lift the poorest nations to new levels of prosperity. In October 2011, he announced the creation of a high-level group to drum up support for energy access, energy efficiency and greater use of renewable energy. The group is to be co-chaired by Candy Yumkula, the chair of UN Energy and Director General of the UN Industrial Development Organization, and Charles Holliday, chairman of Bank of America. 100% Renewable Energy The incentive to use 100% renewable energy, for electricity, transport, or even total primary energy supply globally, has been motivated by global warming and other ecological as well as economic concerns. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has said that there are few fundamental technological limits to integrating a portfolio of renewable energy technologies to meet most of total global energy demand. In reviewing 164 recent scenarios of future renewable energy growth, the report noted that the majority expected renewable sources to supply more than 17% of total energy by 2030 and 27% by 2050. The highest forecast projected 43% supplied by renewables by 2030 and 77% by 2050. Renewable energy use has grown much faster than even advocates anticipated. At the national level, at least 30 nations around the world already have renewable energy contributing more than 20% of energy supply. Also, Professors S. Pekela and Robert H. Socolo have developed a series of stabilization wedges that can allow us to maintain our quality of life while avoiding catastrophic climate change, and renewable energy sources, in aggregate, constitute the largest number of their wedges. Mark Z. Jacobson, Professor of Civil and Environmental Engineering at Stanford University and Director of its Atmosphere and Energy Program says producing all new energy with wind power, solar power, and hydropower by 2030 is feasible and existing energy supply arrangements could be replaced by 2050. Barriers to implementing the renewable energy plan are seen to be primarily social and political, not technological or economic. Jacobson says that energy costs with a wind, solar, water system should be similar to today's energy costs. Similarly, in the United States, the Independent National Research Council has noted that sufficient domestic renewable resources exist to allow renewable electricity to play a significant role in future electricity generation and thus help confront issues related to climate change, energy security, and the escalation of energy costs. Are. Renewable energy is an attractive option because renewable resources available in the United States, taken collectively, can supply significantly greater amounts of electricity than the total current or projected domestic demand. The most significant barriers to the widespread implementation of large-scale renewable energy and low-carbon energy strategies are primarily political and not technological. According to the 2013 Post-Carbon Pathways Report, which reviewed many international studies, the key roadblocks are, climate change denial, the fossil fuels lobby, political inaction, unsustainable energy consumption, outdated energy infrastructure, and financial constraints. Emerging technologies, other renewable energy technologies are still under development, and include cellulosic ethanol, hot dry rock geothermal power, and ocean energy. These technologies are not yet widely demonstrated or have limited commercialization. 
Many are on the horizon and may have potential comparable to other renewable energy technologies, but still depend on attracting sufficient attention and research, development and demonstration funding. There are numerous organizations within the academic, federal, and commercial sectors conducting large-scale advanced research in the field of renewable energy. This research spans several areas of focus across the renewable energy spectrum. Most of the research is targeted at improving efficiency and increasing overall energy yields. Multiple federally supported research organizations have focused on renewable energy in recent years. Two of the most prominent of these labs are Sandia National Laboratories and the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, both of which are funded by the United States Department of Energy and supported by various corporate partners. Sandia has a total budget of $2.4 billion while NREL has a budget of $375 million. Cellulosic Ethanol Companies such as Iogen, Poet, and Abingo are building refineries that can process biomass and turn it into ethanol, while companies such as the Varenium Corporation, Novozymes, and Dyadic International are producing enzymes which could enable a cellulosic ethanol future. The shift from food crop feedstocks to waste residues and native grasses offers significant opportunities for a range of players, from farmers to biotechnology firms, and from project developers to investors. Marine energy Marine energy refers to the energy carried by ocean waves, tides, salinity, and ocean temperature differences. The movement of water in the world's oceans creates a vast store of kinetic energy, or energy in motion. This energy can be harnessed to generate electricity to power homes, transport and industries. The term marine energy encompasses both wave power and euro power from surface waves and tidal power a euro obtained from the kinetic energy of large bodies of moving water. Offshore wind power is not a form of marine energy, as wind power is derived from the wind, even if the wind turbines are placed over water. The oceans have a tremendous amount of energy and are close to many if not most concentrated populations. Ocean energy has the potential of providing a substantial amount of new renewable energy around the world. Enhanced geothermal systems. Enhanced geothermal systems are a new type of geothermal power technologies that do not require natural convective hydrothermal resources. The vast majority of geothermal energy within drilling reaches in dry non-porous rock. EGS technologies enhance and or create geothermal resources in this hot dry rock through hydraulic stimulation. EGS-HDA technologies, like hydrothermal geothermal, are expected to be baseload resources which produce power 24 hours a day like a fossil plant. Distinct from hydrothermal, HDR-EGS may be feasible anywhere in the world, depending on the economic limits of drill depth. Good locations are over deep granite covered by a thick layer of insulating sediments which slow heat loss. There are HDR and EGS systems currently being developed and tested in France, Australia, Japan, Germany the U.S. and Switzerland. The largest EGS project in the world is a 25-megawatt demonstration plant currently being developed in the Cooper Basin, Australia. The Cooper Basin has the potential to generate 5,000 a euro 10,000 EMW. Experimental solar power. Concentrated photovoltaic systems employ sunlight concentrated onto photovoltaic surfaces for the purpose of electricity generation. Thermoelectric. Or thermovoltaic devices convert a temperature difference between dissimilar materials into an electric current. Artificial photosynthesis Artificial photosynthesis uses techniques including nanotechnology to store solar electromagnetic energy in chemical bonds by splitting water to produce hydrogen and then using carbon dioxide to make methanol. Researchers in this field are striving to design molecular mimics of photosynthesis that utilize a wider region of the solar spectrum, employ catalytic systems made from abundant, inexpensive materials that are robust, readily repaired, non-toxic, stable in a variety of environmental conditions and perform more efficiently allowing a greater proportion of photon energy to end up in the storage compounds, that is, carbohydrates. However, Prominent research faces hurdles, some catalytics MIT spin-off stopped scaling up their prototype fuel cell in 2012, 
because it offers few savings over other ways to make hydrogen from sunlight. Renewable energy debate. Renewable electricity production, from sources such as wind power and solar power, is sometimes criticized for being variable or intermittent. However, the International Energy Agency has stated that deployment of renewable technologies usually increases the diversity of electricity sources and, through local generation, contributes to the flexibility of the system and its resistance to central shocks. There have been not in my backyard concerns relating to the visual and other impacts of some wind farms, with local residents sometimes fighting or blocking construction. In the USA, the Massachusetts Cape Wind project was delayed for years partly because of aesthetic concerns. However, residents in other areas have been more positive. According to a town councillor, the overwhelming majority of locals believe that the Ardrossan wind farm in Scotland has enhanced the area. A recent UK government document states that projects are generally more likely to succeed if they have broad public support and the consent of local communities. This means giving communities both a say and a stake. In countries such as Germany and Denmark many renewable projects are owned by communities, particularly through cooperative structures, and contribute significantly to overall levels of renewable energy deployment. The market for renewable energy technologies has continued to grow. Climate change concerns, coupled with high oil prices, peak oil, and increasing government support, are driving increasing renewable energy legislation, incentives and commercialization. New government spending, regulation and policies helped the industry weather the 2009 economic crisis better than many other sectors. References Bibliography External links The Dictionary Definition of Renewable Energy at Wikshinery, Media Related to Renewable Energy at Wikimedia Commons, HTTP teethis.pnnl.gov slash. Teethis is an online knowledge management system that provides the marine and hydrokinetic energy and offshore wind communities with access to information and scientific literature on environmental effects of MHK and OSW developments.